it's Dan here. In this week's episode, let's talk about emerging markets. Uh, that's a super broad topic, so I will try to keep it very simple. So it's it's going to be a beginner's guide of emerging markets. So in this video, you will learn two things. First of all, well, I will of course define what emerging markets mean in finance because you will see that the definitions vary depending on the company who is indexing a fund, for example. And of course, uh, I will also talk about is it worth it to invest in the emerging markets in general and who and who should not invest in this kind of product. All that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. As always for my topics, when I talk about corporate finance and market finance on this channel, I always start with the definition, okay? So what is the definition of emerging markets? And you will see it's pretty surprising. First of all, the emerging markets mean developing countries. So as you know, you have developed countries such as the US, Germany, France, kind of the old big countries, right? And then you have the developing countries who are thriving to become uh, the new developed countries, but are not yet there. Um, th 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 there are many examples and you will, uh, I will show you one that is very surprising. Because what do you think about when I say China? What do you think about China? Well, you probably think about dictatorship, human rights, very strong companies, um, very strong country uh, rivaling the US, price war with the US and these kind of things. So China is kind of the, the new number one in the world. Right now it's number two when you look at the GDP. But what is very surprising when you look at the criteria um, to define an emerging market, you will see that there are four criteria and China right now is still an emerging market when it comes to these four criteria, which is very surprising, given the power of China uh, today. So let's start and you will see why China in this example is still an emerging market, especially in finance. So first, um, China, for example, has a low household income per person. You will see well, that that's very strange because China is the second biggest um, economy in the world when you look at the global GDP right behind the US. But what is very interesting in China, for China is uh, uh, when you look at the country GDP, it's very close to the US. But China, of course, uh, has a much bigger population than the US. And that's why when you divide the country GDP divided by the population, you have a much lower household income about five times less than in U the, the US. So China checks the first box because it's a low household income and there are many other countries I will show you afterwards. Second criteria to be an emerging market uh, are structural changes. And here again, basically all the countries in Asia, especially China, but everything in Southeast Asia as, as well, um, are going through very big structural changes, especially infrastructure, when you think about the Philippines or China with the Belt and Road project, which goes, which is planned to go from, which is the basically the new Silk Road going from China to Germany, you see that this is a major uh, project over there. So infrastructure, definitely a big check uh, on, on the new changes. Then economic development, in other words, growth. Think about China, but also Indonesia, for example. These countries uh, have probably between 5 and 10% 10, 10 GDP growth every year. It's totally normal when the GDP of China is below 6%, everybody's freaking out, you know? That's why it's still an emerging economy. In the US or in Western Europe, if you hit 2, 2.5% 2 GDP, you would be very happy with that. So again, you see a very big difference between developed countries like the US and emerging countries, for example, like Indonesia, with very high uh, GDP growth expected, 5 to 10%, something like that in a, in a normal environment. And then fourth criteria, which is also very important uh, to be an emerging market, is uh, your, uh, your financial markets are still immature. What does it mean? Let's uh, again, let's look at China, for example, and what's going on over there at the, at the, equi at the stock market or at the bond market. You will see that the governance, which took 50 or 100 years in the US to, to be established and to be, let's say, crisis free or at least uh, scandal free. Well, in China, you have the government, which interacts a lot into the, the stock IPOs and these kind of things. So um, 
and the meddling of the government is the big problem and that's why it shows you that the country is still immature when it comes to the financial markets because there are too many scandals and these kind of things happening uh, right now. That's why China and other uh, emerging economies are still checking this box. So now you see this is the first broad definition of emerging markets and now you understand why China is part of emerging markets in the financial world. Now that we have understood the definition of emerging markets, uh, let's try to understand what an emerging market fund is. So what you have to understand about the fund is it's, uh, it's set up by a company, for example MSCI or Vanguard or BlackRock, which are the big companies behind the funds. And these companies will decide, okay, for the emerging markets, they are, they are the ground rules I showed you before with the four criteria, but each of the companies and each of the funds will decide which companies and which countries they want to include, okay? So this is very important when it comes to emerging markets um, to look at which companies are included and which countries especially are included because there are big differences between the three. It's not like when you um, uh, invest in, in, in the US, for example. If you want to invest in a, in a fund for the S&P 500, for example, the biggest and most profitable 500 biggest US companies, which is called the S&P 500, uh, you can buy either of the three S&P 500 funds and they're exactly the same because they're just buying the biggest 500 company shares and they put it all together in a basket for you so you can buy them. For the emerging markets, it's much more tricky because, uh, as I told you before, with the four criteria, um, it's, uh, the, the choice is wider. So as a fund, you can decide I'm, I'm putting Pakistan in or I'm leaving them out for different reasons or I put this company in or this company out also for different reasons. To give you a, a little bit of an idea which countries are included in general um, in the emerging market fund, for example, here is a list. Uh, in, a, in America, for example, it could be Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, Peru. So as you can see, Brazil, huge economy, the other ones uh, smaller. Then uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, that's also a very mixed bunch. You see a lot of Eastern Europe, for example, Czech Republic, uh, Hungary, Poland, and stuff like that. And then you have Egypt, for example, Qatar, which is kind of a new rich, right? Russia, which is again a very different uh, ball game, and then Turkey, for example, which had a huge problems in the last couple of years. Um, and in Asia, as I just mentioned earlier, it's very, very strange because you have China, which is like the huge player, and then uh, you have India, which is the, the second biggest, and all the others are kind of smaller um, developing nations. But what is, what is usually striking when you look at emerging markets uh, funds is how big the share of China is. Usually it's like 25% or something like that. It can be good or not. It really depends on your preferences, but you de what you definitely have to check are two things. Um, the, first of all, look at the different funds. Uh, you can Google, of course, you can all Google emerging fu market funds, but what is very important to understand is, first of all, the countries vary, so make sure to look at uh, the country list. And second of all, of course, when you're buying an emerging market fund, what exactly are you buying? Are you buying stocks? So are you buying the property uh, of the company? Are you buying, are you becoming an owner, a little part owner of, let's say, Tencent in China? Or are you buying debt of companies? So are you buying Alibaba's debt, for example? That's a big question you have to ask yourself uh, because, of course, the stocks and the bonds don't, don't perform the same way, of course. And, of course, depending on the countries which are included, um, you can have very big yield differences at the end of the year, which means the performance of one fund compared to the other can be very different as well. Are emerging market funds interesting? Are they worth it? Should you invest inside? Um, does it make sense for whom, for whom not? Well, let's try to find out. First of all, the most important thing you probably should know about emerging market funds is that they are riskier than, for example, if you invest in, in US stocks or in European stocks. Why? Because think about the countries that are involved and you will see that 
all these countries, first of all, the economy uh, is kind of uh, shaky. It can go up and down very, very quickly, depending on the political situation and these kind of things. And of course, the companies which are uh, in China and Pakistan and all the other countries I was mentioning, uh, of course, depend on the local economy and what's going on politically, right? So, um, of course, in such a fund, you should expect high volatility, which means big ups and big downs when it comes to performance, right? Year over year. Then, uh, of course, you are running in kind of a compliance issue because I think about the countries I showed you in, on the list earlier and you, and you would see that countries such as China, for example, or Pakistan, uh, they can be countries that are on the US sanction list, which generally means that it's not a good it's not a country to invest in usually because they are performing pretty badly once you are sanctioned by the US, which is the biggest country in the world, right? Um, and then, um, again, uh, when, when you look at the list I showed you before, you are clearly investing in unknown countries and usually you don't know the companies besides of the big Chinese uh, Alibaba, Tencent and so on. But if you look at the hundred or thousand companies you are investing in, you probably don't know 98% of them, okay? So don't forget that, of course. And then there is also the exchange rate risk because emerging, emerging market funds, well, they depend on all these different economies. And of course, all these economies, they have to exchange their local currency, for, for example, the Turkish lira into the US dollar at some point. And that's why uh, you, you have a big exchange rate risk. Taking Turkey, for example, of course, if you... If the uh, Turkish company makes Turkish profits at some point uh, in, in such a fund, uh, the Turkish profits, uh, dividends, for example, will be converted into US dollars. And then, of course, it will really depend on the exchange rate, if it's good or if it's bad for you. So, But that's definitely uh, another volatility, another risk. Okay, so now, who should invest inside and who should stay away? Well, first of all, in my opinion, emerging markets are worth it. Yes, definitely, if, well, first of all, if you are a risk taker, of course, I told you before, emerging markets are riskier because of the, the, the economies that are more fragile, right? And especially um, when you are afraid of crisis and if you want to keep it simple um, and, and don't lose too much in crisis, don't invest in the emerging markets funds because they tend to be hammered in crises like the pandemic, for example, or the financial crisis. Because when there is a big crisis, uh, the investors pull out all their money from emerging markets and pull it into a safe haven like the US, for example, and the US dollar. So definitely you got to be a risk taker uh, for emerging markets. Then maybe it could be very interesting if you are already investing in the US and in Europe, for example, you could continue your geographic diversification and own different companies in different countries worldwide so internationally that's very, very interesting and then of course in inside the emerging market world i would of course always invest long term because short term the volatility is super high you can lose you can lose 40 percent a year or gain 40 percent a year but uh, on a long-term approach think about china think about indonesia uh, eastern europe all these countries in the next 20 years the chance is pretty good that there will be great opportunities and that these countries will uh, grow very fast but over a long period of time with some drama in between okay so if you're investing long-term emerging markets over 20 30 years are definitely a, a thing to try i would if if you're building a portfolio don't don't go more than 10 20 percent emerging markets I, 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 over 10 20 percent in my opinion it's too risky uh, and of course Emerging markets are interesting if you want high growth stocks, of course. If you're looking at uh, Grab, which is the Uber of Southeast Asia, for example, or uh, these kind of companies, or Mercado Libre, which is um, the, the Amazon of South America, and these kind of companies, these are great growth stocks if they perform well in the next 20 years, of course. Um, of course, on the, on the negative side, is it worth it? No. If you want to keep it simple, um, Warren Buffett once said, if you only own the S&P 500, for example, so the 500 biggest companies in America, you will probably do very well over 30 years. So if you just want to do this, and this is basically what I do, 
uh, then uh, if you want to keep it simple and not too risky then emergency uh, emerging market is probably not for you and also as I told you earlier when you're looking at the list of the countries and the companies that are inside the fund and if you don't trust these countries or companies for example China or Pakistan or whatever country if you don't trust them if you don't have a good feeling about them maybe just don't invest in such a fund or try to find a different emerging market fund where one of these countries for example is not included right it's your choice you're investing here so I hope uh, all this was informative um, as you know I am trying to make high value content every Sunday when I post of course corporate finance market finance so of course don't forget to like if you like that kind of stuff don't forget to subscribe to my channel once a week every Sunday a new high value uh, content video <laughs> enjoy see you next Sunday bye bye guys enjoy